All right, we have some news on our EasyFlex platform. Uh, the EasyFlex platform is our stamp-sized potentiostat used to drive our sensors and transmit the uh, uh, currents or potentials wirelessly over uh, Bluetooth low energy. It is powered by this small uh, stamp-sized flexible battery or alternatively a different power source like a AA battery uh, depending on uh, whatever suits the application. Uh, so the news uh, revolves uh, primarily around the software side of things. Um, we have a new readout platform or an update of that platform which allows us to change around some of the settings of our uh, EasyFlex. Whereas before, um, the interface wouldn't allow us to interact with the platform, it would only read out the values that this one transmits, uh, but without any uh, option to talk back, to change some of the settings. And changing the settings uh, can be beneficial if you're running a developmental program. Let's say you have a sensor uh, which is under development uh, and you're not entirely sure of what are the optimal settings uh, so it can be advantageous to be able to play around with stuff like dynamic range, uh, gain, uh, internal ground, bias potential, etc. So we're just going to show uh, what the capabilities are. So we're going to download this. This is uh, f from the wearable pages of, of Zimmer and Peacock. You can navigate to this page, download the app, it's called 1.4, and set up. This message is probably going to show up. We're just going to go ahead and ignore that. Click install, and the app should start. Uh, by itself. Uh, the next time we need to start it, uh, there should be a shortcut available from both the uh, desktop and the start menu. Okay, so uh, what I've plugged in to, uh, to act as our sensor now is one of our, uh, let's see if we can keep this still, uh, validation sensors. And the validation sensor is good in that you don't have to mess around with uh, chemicals uh, or liquids uh, on your desk. Uh, you can just plug this little ceramic strip and you'll be good to go. Uh, so you can play around with the instrument settings uh, without having to worry about the sensor. Uh, and basically this looks like all our other sensors. It's a ceramic substrate. Looks like this. and. On it, we've, we've populated it with some resistors and capacitors in order to act as a model for the electrochemical cell. Okay, so this one is a simple one which holds a 42.2K resistor. And that's it. So we can play around with it and see if we can get some different currents. So I'm just going to hook it up to my power source. and I'm going to click scan on my software. So my device popped up and it says it's uh, ready for connection. Double click name to connect. So this is the name, we we'll double click it. You see it's establishing the connection and now it will start reading these settings and start populating some of these fields. So the major change with this firmware is this panel right here. Uh, we have six different uh, settings to play with uh, and we're going to uh, do them in this order from top down. The virtual ground uh, refers to which portion of the dynamic range that you allocate for either positive or negative uh, signals. So if you are operating a sensor that's primarily oxidative, uh, you choose a low virtual ground 
so you allocate everything above 20%, that is to say 80% of the dynamic range to oxidative currents, but you still allow 20% uh, of negative swing. Uh, you can change it up to, let's say, uh, 50%, which means I'm gonna send that setting to my uh, EasyFlex, uh, and that means that you allocate equally much uh, to negative and uh, positive currents. So you can see my outer bounds have changed to minus 47 and plus 47. If I expect primarily a negative current, I can step it up to 67%. And you can see that uh, I have more availability on the negative side. So that's what virtual ground is about. Uh, let's look at the next setting. Uh, instrumental mode. Uh, this is uh, okay to play around with for primarily uh, if you're looking to optimize on, on current consumption. There are different modes uh, that you can use. Uh, this one is the most power consuming one. It reads both uh, the temperature of the potential stat chip and uh, the sensor. So you can see we have a temperature here. Let's try to heat uh, the potential stat a little bit by blowing on it. You see it increased slightly. It should be going back down again. Well, you can see there's also a, there's also an increase in our current. So that's why we include the temperature so that you can correlate uh, any, uh, say, let's say, non-chemical change, changes uh, in the signal with temperature. Uh, temperature only means temperature only, so that means uh, that your current isn't going to show you anything useful, but you can use it as a, as a temperature sensor. Or you could do the opposite, disregard the temperature and just read out our uh, signal. Uh, the standby mode is uh, for shutting down uh, the current to voltage converter. So it means you're still applying the cell voltage, but you are not uh, reading it. So if you want to maintain the voltage of the sensor, but you're not interested in reading it at that particular time, that, that's an effective way of saving some power. And you have deep sleep, which basically puts the potential stat front end to sleep, and, and you can trust none of these readings. Uh, so this, if you want to further save power, this is the way to go. You can uh, put it to sleep for, let's say, five minutes, then go back, do a reading, put it back to sleep as an effective means of power saving. All right, we're going to put it back to uh, the mode that gives us the most information. You can see we jump back to uh, uh, 16, 15, 16 microamps. You can also read it here. But you should also be able to click these dots and read the exact values. All right, the zoom you do with the mouse wheel. Uh, let's go to the next setting. The next setting is gain. Uh, and the gain, uh, along with your virtual ground, uh, allows you to tweak the dynamic range of the EasyFlex such that it matches the dynamic range of the sensor. So let's say uh, that we would want some more gain. All right, I'm going to s switch it down to 50% the virtual ground because if I increase the gain, you see uh, this one is going to actually pop out of uh, the available dynamic range of the EasyFlex. So let's first go down a notch, maybe even 20%. And 
then we increase our gain from 35,000 to 120,000. And there you go. The current uh, it reads out is more or less the same, uh, but you have increased the resolution, so that means we are we have a higher refinement for our current divisions. You can also tweak the input load. So this one is a load that's put between uh, the your cell and the input of your amplifier, the current to voltage amplifier. That might be useful to someone. Uh, this here, bias voltage, uh, is very often a topic. Finding the optimal uh, voltage for your sensor might be that if you have too high voltage, you run the risk of uh, of electrolyzing some of the potential interference. Uh, so we want to optimize that as well. You see, we have 13, 14 uh, options available, ranging from zero to 720 millivolts. And we can also double that by changing the sign. So let's say I wanted to apply a negative voltage on our resistor. Uh, we send it, and you can see that we are getting a negative current. You might have noticed that the current isn't the uh, previous current with the flipped sign. And that actually indicates that we have exceeded the maximum available range. So then we can either do one of we can do one of two things. We can either change the gain to increase our dynamic range, but I think the better option here would actually be to allow more space on the negative side. So we're going to change the virtual ground to 67%. And you can see that just took care of getting the signal back to where it should be. It's still close uh, to the uh, maximum limit of the negative side, so we could, we could just to be safe, uh, take it down one notch like this. And finally, there is one more setting. Uh, that you now can do, it, and that is a complete uh, software reset of the circuit. So if you hit this button, it will reboot your device without you having to power cycling it. And let's scan and see if we can find it. There it is. And now it should restart at, uh, at uh, a time close to uh, zero. So it's restarted the timer, it's restarted the settings, and the settings that you put we put there before have been reset by the default settings. Alright, that's it. Thank you all for watching.